We're here today discussing Blizzard of Souls, which premieres in virtual cinemas this Friday, January 8th, and is Latvia's uh, official Oscar submission for Best International Feature. Can I have each of you introduce yourselves and tell me a bit about your role on the film? Okay, yeah, I'll start myself. I'm uh, Zintax Dreibax. I am uh, director and producer of the movie. Um, okay, let's give floor to Lolita. I'm Lolita Ritmanis. I'm the composer of the score. Honored to have worked on this film. I'm Valdis. I'm, I'm Valdis Selminch. I'm cinematographer. I'm Otto Brantovic, and I play the main role in the movie. Uh, Artur Svanax. Wonderful. Thank you so much. It's great to be speaking with uh, all of you today. Uh, can you tell me how you came on board this project? You can, I guess we can go in the same order if that makes sense, just uh, for any questions that apply to everybody. Okay. So uh, the, uh, I, I was invited to participate in the competition. The idea did not come from me. So I was really blessed to, to have the possibility to, to fight for this project because it's based on a book what's written in the trenches by real riflemen and uh, the book was forbidden for 50 years in during USSR and it tells about this blank page of in history which was usually be silenced about and and the possibility to take this unique story and put it in perspective of very personal young per person's experience that was mainly the, the one of the only things why would I ever go to films at all. Yeah. Um, and I was contacted by Zintars uh, many years ago um, when, when the uh, project was just starting. And I wasn't sure it was, if it was going to happen, but I thought, well, if it is going to happen, I would be honored to be on board with this film. So when I actually got the call that, yes, it's, we've been filming and we're going to be ready to start talking music soon. It was, it was an absolute dream come true. And to work with uh, over a hundred of the most incredibly talented musicians and choir in, in Riga and record there um, was very much um, just an incredible full circle experience for me being of Latvian heritage. And I speak Latvian, so it was, was wonderful, wonderful experience for me. I will just add, because Lolita really underestimates her. Lolita is winner, Emmy Award winner. And this is my debut movie. You can imagine I'm living in small block of flats and trying to contact Lolita in Los Angeles. It's high, it's Zintax calling. <laughs> maybe, maybe you can help with the movie. You know, that, that was not so simple as Lolita is saying. But she was so amazing. So thank, thank, okay. thank you. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, me and Zinters, we, we worked on documentaries before. And uh, of course, uh, at, at first when he got the movie, I thought, okay, he is gonna contact, uh, I don't know, uh, Roger Deakins or uh, anyone else uh, <laughs> to, have, uh, to have some support. But uh, for a surprise, he, he, uh, he chose me. I don't know, it was, because maybe it's because we like the same jokes and uh, a little, little similar background for, uh, for approach to the life. Deakin thought he's working on a similar movie. <laughs> <laughs> and Ota? Okay, I actually joined uh, almost completely accidentally. Um, because I went to the casting with uh, two of my friends, uh, my ex-classmates, just for just for fun. Without, um, I don't know if I don't know if they had any goal, but at least I didn't have any goal of uh, becoming an actor or playing this role. It was just plainly because of fun and because there was nothing to do uh, outside of uh, school. So. So when I got there and all I uh, did was just instantly, um, I really didn't know, I didn't have any system, any, any, any scheme on what I need to do. I was not acting. I was just like, okay, I will just do it like this and that. I will, they say, they um, say to me to say something, I, I say, say to them and that's it. And I thought that actually that I was so bad that um, they will just cancel me and uh, 
and I will not get any further. But uh, time passed and I got further and further and uh, I actually was surprised. How am I still here? So in short, it, it was just one big accident. Wow. Uh, Zintar, as you mentioned earlier about uh, the uh, relevance of the book, uh, and I know that this film broke box office records in Latvia. And so I'd love to know a little bit more about the cultural and historical significance uh, of this story. Oh yeah, this, uh, that, that was amazing. Of course, when, when we made the, the movie, we, ex we hoped that, that people would appreciate it, that they would understand this uh, visual language that we developed with Valdis, but still there's always some kind of doubt because you never know. You know when, when you give it to audience, you never know how it will happen. And then it somehow happened. The people started to come and come to the film. And uh, during these ages of Netflixes and HBOs where our uh, audience records are not so high anymore, then somehow the film surpassed both Avatar and Titanic that were leaders for many years and in Latvia. And, uh, uh, that 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 really gave a very warm feeling, and uh, it was both this box office records, but same this this feeling uh, which you're also asking came during the filming and then shooting, because because uh, the budget of our film is uh, less than two million dollars, and uh, we have to make like big blockbuster. Uh, what what war movie involves, and uh, so what we did, we actually ask in the Facebook people just to come as a part of experience to, 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 uh, to participate as volunteers and extras. And so many people applied that it was even impossible to, to use them all. It's more than 3000 people there. You can see in the titles, <laughs> the army hour. And, uh, and in times when it got very difficult, uh, it really gave a lot of support and, and strength that, uh, that somehow this film is needed or, or we are going in the right direction. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And Valdis, I'd love to hear uh, more about the visual language uh, that was just mentioned. There is a real power in the way that this film is shot, particularly when the battlefields are blanketed in snow. Uh, what was important for you to capture and convey? Hmm. Um, as, as Zinters mentioned before, we uh, to to tell the story, we developed like two uh, very strict rules for ourselves um, to to make it um, realistic. Otherwise, uh, to tell such a huge story um, would would become uh, too difficult in in, in a short um, two 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 and a half hours time, and also. There, there would be some more difficulties that will uh, uh, come out of it. But, but the main thing was that um, we concentrated on the story and the story was coming of age of, of this uh, young kid becoming an old man in, in five years. And so um, we wanted to show it as a, his experience of going through this war and um, we, we we searched for uh, for some inspiration, and one one of the uh, biggest for me was Laszlo Nemes, uh, Son of Saul, um, um, which is very conceptual movie, but it shows um, only a little uh, of, of uh, background going on, but mostly it's hiding. The camera is hiding behind the back of, uh, of the main character, and and it, and, and it's a film with a biggest potential of uh, imagination for the audience because you are shown so little that you you you, you feel like you have uh, seen everything and um, we wanted to go this uh, personal way but we want uh, didn't want it to be too conceptual so we made um, rule of three uh, shots so ba basically what do we do we we show what our main character sees we show what he uh, feels, it's his uh, close-up, and we show what he's doing. It's, it's a medium shot of, of a situation, and that's it. We never go outside of his, uh, um, what he can see. We are always right next to him, so it involves everything. It's trenches, 
Uh, it's if we are in the swamp, we are there. If we are, we, if we jump in the water, we jump in the water with the camera. We have to be there. It's no use of uh, having it outside of it because uh, we want to have this feeling of of being a private um, in inside the war. And I, I think it, it works. Um, be, and the, the best compliment for us is that uh, our general audience usually doesn't notice the concept. All they, they see, it's, it's very um, emotional, it's very realistic um, and ha has this documentary feel, but they don't notice those hard rules um, behind it. And I think that's, that's the best compliment that you don't you don't see the bricks uh, or, or, or of the wall. You see the wall. No, that that, that was really great. Um, thank you, uh, Lalita. This film has a haunting and emotional score. What inspired you, and what feelings did you want to showcase through music? My goal was was to be the music that would. That, that would help the audience feel what we're already feeling. <laughs> I didn't want to add another layer, but I wanted to um, have the music speak through through Otto's eyes, through Arthur's, the, our main character's eyes. Um, there was so much, when I watched the film the first time, the rough cut, and there was no music, um, It was there, the goosebump factor was very, very high for me. So the idea was, what can I, what can I add um, to, to add an element, but without without ruining already what's what's there. So Zintars and I had a, a lot of back and forth. Also with the editor, got this Belgrodos, and we um, there was a lot the, that communication and that trust that I felt from Zintars allowed me to explore some of the deeper aspects musically um, on this film, and to have the choir at my disposal, this incredible state choir Latvia, knowing that they can pretty much sing anything um, and that having having those voices also be very representative of, of kind of the soul of the film I think um, it's a very it's a very delicate line because a lot of it we wanted to treat very much like um, a documentary I mean especially the, the the war scenes the we only come in where well, there's a six minute period of the of the Christmas uh, fight where there's no music and and just finding the right spot to come back in I mean it's just just so that we can feel without without music overpowering. So it was um, it was a wonderful experience, and I really hope everyone can go and watch and listen. I, yeah, I think it's it's very powerful. Uh, Otto, once you did get this part, uh, I think it's a very uh, demanding and, and sort of physical role. What did you find most challenging about the part? Well, the whole filming was uh, very challenging. Um, I did not have any experience at all. I, I did not uh, know what I should expect, what I should hope for. I was just living the moment. But uh, I can, shortly, I can even say uh, that the emotional parts of the movie were the most, the most challenging because the physical challenges, you know, when you're tired and, and it, it will pass. It, it will pass and uh, eventually you will get some pause, you will get to eat, you will um, get to drink some water, you will get to rest. But uh, the emotional parts are what are in your brain, it's in your head, it's, it's not in your muscles where you can, and, and uh, when you stop, you stop. Um, I was, I can say that I was, uh, some emotional parts I was living so much that um, I got uh, in a, some weird kind of the uh, in school, I was uh, constantly thinking how lonely I am and that, that no one needs me and why are there are things that I'm doing like filming, uh, uh, going to school, why, why, uh, why am I doing this, why am I even existing, what's the point of that? And uh, there is also weird relationship with my brother um, that that uh, at one point in the movie, uh, Arthur's brothers uh, dies. And I actually, this scene got so close to my heart that I had some mixed emotions towards my brother. It was like, um, I, I acknowledge that he's alive, that he is my brother, but still there's some, some kind of emptiness, some kind of that, um, 
you are not here or you are somewhat dead to me or something like that. That's very weird to explain, but that was the most challenging part, the emotional part of the movie. And so I know, I think this, this question is probably for, for Zintars, um, the film is known as Blizzard of Souls in some places and The Rifleman in others. Can you explain why there are two titles and and uh, what what speaks to you about both of those? Oh, okay, this is just crazy stuff that, uh, that when you make the movie, then uh, uh, the people in different countries can decide about different titles, <laughs> make their own trailers and stuff like that. So to say the truth, I don't care so much about it because I'm just happy that uh, that film can be seen in in world and uh, world and. Uh, that, that this story that so many countries actually want to see it and it's it's just sad that it's impossible to see in the big screens but but for me this title of blizzard of souls uh, which is direct translation of uh, of the title of the book is of course much more warmer and uh, and stronger because uh, i think when you see the mo when you see the movie you understand this poetic meaning and uh, if the guy who sits in the trenches and writes about war somehow comes up with such a poetic uh, title this 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 tells so much and uh, and even though i know that in different countries it sounds and, uh, like some kind of uh, uh, horror movie then <laughs> i still am ready for risk uh, that, that 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 it makes this right taste afterwards yeah no oh, absolutely and so this film uh if it's nominated for an oscar it will mark latvia's first ever oscar nomination for best international feature just love to hear from all of you what would this mean to you personally and what do you think it will mean to the country in general let's talk backwards <laughs> so it's me first yeah yeah <laughs> okay uh, um personally for um this was some weird. I know that Oscar is very big award, uh, not only in the United States, but in the whole world. But um, to be honest, uh, for me personally, personally, it will just be an award. And I don't think that people, well, people will always say to me that, you know, look how good uh, has uh, Blizzard of Souls, uh, what statistics they have and what awards they have. And they, they're saying that almost that that's only my job. I don't consider that that's my job. My job um, is comparing to how many people were in the movie. It's just a very small percentage. Um, I think that it's um, not personally for me, but it's great, great success for, for our team for for uh, the inters, for Valdis, for Lolita, for for uh, makeup artists, uh, costume artists, all the extras, everybody who was in the movie, it's a great uh, success and award for our Latvian nation that uh, won a very big part of Latvian history. Uh, important part has been told to the world. Uh, and then I don't know, it's very hard to explain, but um, I I see I see that this that this Oscar um, is more for a common good of the Latvians and uh, and the film crew than personally for me. Lavita, do you want to go next or about this? Well, I think all, all this is we're going <laughs> all this year next. <laughs> oh, everyone is afraid. Um, me too. Um, that that's a difficult question, and I'm I'm superstitious, and I don't want to daydream um, <laughs> about something. Um, but uh, I think the the main thing is uh, if we get the film out for the audience, that's the most important thing because. Uh, we we've spent uh, um, so many years uh, to, to to do it, and uh, the more we get someone to see it, uh, the the more we we get uh, energy back. And I think that's that uh, that's of course the main thing. Um, well, I can say this: I'm 
I, w I was nominated about six or seven times for the Emmy Award before I actually won an Emmy Award. And when I won it, it was much more for my family and for my mom and for everybody. It was it, not that it didn't mean something to me. Of course, awards, they make you feel good. But the, the, the biggest gift of this project really is the project and the moment of from this. I'm, I was sad when it when we were done with it, when I was sad when I actually received the final. Here's the final mix, final copy. It was just, oh, it's over. But this whole this next whole journey with awards and ha and it having won the, the most prestigious awards in Latvia, um, it's just it's 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 a bit melancholy. So I just wish that pe I want people to see it. I want people to see my colleagues' brilliant work, watch it, listen to it, and just enjoy it. And if we can bring some light to the incredible filmmaking uh, of Latvia and of Zinter's vision, then that's the main thing, really, to to to. To, for people to enjoy it and watch it. Uh, this is the most beautiful moment for director where everybody does <laughs> something that you cannot add anything because that's that's exactly what I think. And I try I try to define myself what what would be success of the story. And it was that I would after the movie be able to go into our brother's cemetery where those guys lie and feel good about it that at least not be ashamed that that was the main thing but of course oscars is something that we always been looking for when it, oh, i know oscars result much better than any others and uh, of course to be part of it it's already interesting and it is of course about the audience and about telling this story to more people we are debut filmmakers plus Lolita, and uh, if there is chance, if somebody gives the chance to the movie, Oscars can, of course, be amazing. First step to that, yeah, to the world. Yeah. Uh, Blizzard of Souls will be released in virtual cinemas in the U.S. by Film Movement this Friday, January 8th. Uh, thank you all for speaking, me uh, speaking with me today and for having the conversation in English. I appreciate that. Uh, and best of luck with uh, the film and with the Oscars. Thank you. Next time we can speak in Latvia, no problem. I'll get started. Thank you. <laughs>